Okay, guys, we're looking at D3 today on IXL, match problems with their solutions. This is very similar to cause and effect, but instead of just in general being a cause and then the effect that happens because of it, we're looking specifically for problems and how they are solved or attempting to be, to be solved. It says, through the number of giant, though the number of giant pandas has increased in recent years, the bears still face several challenges. One issue is that the panda diet is made up of bamboo, which is difficult to digest. Much of what they eat is passed as waste. To get all the nutrients they need, bamboo, or pandas must eat 20 to 40 pounds of bamboo each day. The biggest crisis pandas face, though, is a loss of habitat. Chinese cities are growing fast and are pushing pandas out of their homes. Thankfully, the Chinese government is taking action by establishing parks and reserves where pandas are protected. So, much of what pandas eat passes through as waste. So, how do pandas try to solve that? Much of what they eat is passed as waste. To get all the nutrients they need, pandas must eat 20 to 40 pounds of bamboo each day. That's pretty large quantities, so I'm going to put that there. Pandas are losing their natural habitat. That's their biggest problem, according to this paragraph. It says Chinese cities are growing fast, but thankfully the Chinese government is taking action by establishing parks and reserves where pandas are protected. There you go. So very similar to cause and effect, but it's problem and solution. Today, Jesse Owens is remembered as a world-class track and field athlete, but his path to stardom was long and full of hardship. Owens represented the United States at the 1936 Berlin Olympic Games, where he earned four gold medals. But when he returned home, President Franklin D. Roosevelt never met with Owens to congratulate him, contrary to tradition. In 1976, the mistreatment was finally addressed when President Gerald Ford awarded Owens the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Sadly, despite his success, Owens struggled to make money. To earn a living, he had to participate in stunt races against dogs, horses, and motorcycles. So, Owens was awarded the Medal of Freedom in 1976. What was the problem that that fixed? Well, that he failed to get the recognition that he deserved because Franklin D. Roosevelt never met with Owens to congratulate him. But the mistreatment was finally addressed when Ford awarded Owens the Presidential Medal of Freedom. What was the solution of Owens participated in stunt races? What did that help? Owens fail, Olympic wins failed to result in financial success. Owen struggled to make money to earn a living. He had to participate in stunt races. Okay. Is low cost space travel possible? Jeff Bezos thinks so, or Bezos thinks so. In 2015, his company, Blue Origin, launched New Shepard, a reusable spaceship. New Shepard's design allows the spaceship to return to Earth after flights. This is an improvement on traditional spacecraft, which are incapable of reuse. Blue Origin might also have a low-cost alternative to traditional rocket fuel. Their proposed BE-4 engine runs on liquid oxygen and methane, a natural gas, rather than any on liquid oxygen and kerosene. Methane is less likely than kerosene to clog engine fuel lines, which would make BE4 engines last longer than existing engines. So traditional spacecraft cannot be used. The solution was New Shepard's design allows the ship to return to Earth after flights. Okay, so Blue Origin launched New Shepard. Traditional engines can get clogged. Um, methane is less likely than kerosene to clog fuel lines. So 
this BE4 that uses methane was the solution. Okay? Let's jump a level. So when you get into the tougher area, it's going to have you looking at three problems or solutions and, and matching them. With their canvas covers stretched over curved hoops, Conestoga wagons were a common sight in the eastern United States during the 19th century. When it came to the rugged terrain of the western frontier, however, Conestoga wagons were too large and heavy. To meet the challenges of the Oregon Trail, most pioneers used smaller wagons that came to be known as prairie schooners. When pulled by mules or oxen, these wagons could cover 15 to 20 miles a day. At times, settlers needed to cross streams and rivers along the trail. They made sure the prairie schooners would float by caulking or sealing the cracks with tar. However, these wagons made for exceptionally bumpy rides. Many pioneers dealt with this by walking alongside the wagons or riding horses instead. So pioneers used prairie schooners. What did that solve? Let's see. Um, I believed that solved because the Conestoga wagons were too large and heavy. So that's where we go here. Um, pioneers caulked the wagons with tar. I remember this part. Um, at times, settlers needed to cross streams and rivers along the trail. They made sure that the prairie schooners would float by caulking or sealing with tar. So pioneers had to cross rivers and streams. However, these wagons made for exceptionally bumpy rides. Many pioneers dealt with this by walking alongside or riding horses. So riding in the wagons was uncomfortable. Pioneers walked or rode horses. Hopefully that makes sense to you. We're gonna enter the challenge zone real quick. Okay, so this time they give you four problems and then you have to match four solutions. In the early 1900s, the U.S. government proposed building a dam in the Black Canyon of the Colorado River. However, work could not begin while the river still flowed through the construction site. Four tunnels were blasted into the canyon walls to channel the water away. The next question was how to create the dam's foundation within the massive canyon walls. Suspended high above the canyon floor, workers used jackhammers to blast out soil and other loose material. Once they reached solid rock, they had to make sure the foundation was stable. They used grout to fill holes and cracks that appeared. After that, they were ready for the first concrete pour. As concrete hardens, it creates heat and contracts. Offsetting the heat from such a huge amount of concrete was a big concern. Workers embedded steel pipes in the concrete and cold river water flowed through. Finally, after five years of construction, the Hoover Dam began operating in 1936. So the river had to be diverted was the problem. Okay. Build a dam. However, work could not begin while the river still flowed through the construction site. Four tunnels were blasted into canyon walls to channel the water away. So where does it say about tunnels? Right there. The foundation had to be built. The next question was how to create the dam's foundation within the massive canyon walls. Workers used jackhammer to blast out soil. So workers removed soil. The foundation had to be reinforced. Um, once they reached solid rock, they had to make sure the foundation was stable. They used grout to fill holes and cracks that appeared. Okay, so the workers used grout. The concrete had to be cool. Offsetting the heat from such a huge amount of concrete was a big concern. Workers embedded steel pipes in the concrete and cold river water flowed through. So 
That makes sense there. There you go. Okay, so as you can see, it just becomes more detailed in looking for multiple problems and multiple solutions. Um, and, you know, just matching your problem with the correct solution. Make sure you read it. Make sure you read it carefully. Even if you think you know the answer, it's always good to double check. For example, on that last one that I did, pipes going through and tunnels could be kind of similar. So I needed to make sure that I used the same exact verbiage, the same exact nouns that they used. Okay, so good luck. Take your time and take, make sure you reread. Okay.